Everybody, we are back. It is taped on Watch Favorite Raiders Podcast, Favorite Raiders Channel, Favorite Raiders Everything. We are back. You guys already know what to do. Hit the subscribe button. Subscribe, subscribe, subscribe. Hit the like button if you like it. Hit the dislike button if you don't like it. Leave a comment if you like it. Leave a comment if you don't like it. Also, follow us on Twitter at the Mark John NFL for me at BD Williams18 for BD. Also, pandasupplements.com. Hit up panda subs. Everything TDL 50% off. So sorry, not 50%, 35% off. And of course, I've you know, got the shirt. Go get your shirt too if you want to. Go ahead and rep Pen Subs if you don't want to get protein shakes or anything like that. So make sure you guys check us check that out as well. Thank you. I appreciate that. Comment. So BD, we're reviewing a third win in a row over the Chargers. Yep. Uh, definitely excited about the the uh outlook of the season now fans our fans are, are looking at the schedule thinking hey man we got a chance at the playoffs here especially with the afc kind of up in the air right um and definitely right. knock off some of these teams that could help them with the the record and tiebreakers for sure uh so you know there's definitely some excitement but uh what what do you think of the the game overall after watching the film uh it was I, I came away extremely impressed with the job that Patrick Graham did in terms of just like the cat and mouse game. And I'm going to highlight a lot of that, uh, you know, what, what was happening, you know, how he was attacking their coverages and what they were doing to stop that. And then how the Raiders adjusted and then, you know, uh, you know, back in the back and forth. And it just happened the entire game. Patrick Graham never ran out of answers. And that's extremely encouraging uh, to see, you know, I, this guy, um, uh, Lombardi, right? That's the uh, Mr. Joe Lombardi. Yes, Joe, Joe Lombardi. Joe Lombardi is is the uh, Chargers' offensive coordinator. Uh-huh. It's funny because um, the schemes that Patrick Graham was using, uh, a, a big a big chunk of that, can, it, it got popularized by Zim, Mike Zimmer and you know Paul Gunther kind of ate off of that in during the Cincinnati Bengals days. Yeah. And I guess this guy Lombardi is just came in right after that was kind of, you know, that scheme was kind of getting phased out because he he did not understand what to do to you know ruin the you know this scheme. Uh-huh. And I thought that that was funny because this scheme kind of got played out because it was so obvious and so easy for teams to, you know, kind of like beat it. And I guess this guy Lombardi just never, didn't see it. Like he came into the NFL right after or something. It was just like, he did, he did not know the answers. And I'll, I'll show, I'll show you guys, uh, you know, a little later on when we do the defensive segment. So he got uh, def- a defensive coordinator, Patrick Graham, got, got the cap to him. He out schemed out coach this guy on the other side. Okay. All right. Uh, on the offensive side of the ball, I thought you know it was an interesting game. I thought the offensive line uh, played okay. I think the interior played struggled a lot. I thought you know Parham struggled a lot. Of course, Alex Barr struggled a lot. Um, and James was pretty good, but I thought Illuminar was okay. And then Cole Miller was was pretty good on that side. So you know, different from you know how the broadcast kind of presented it. I thought it was interesting. You know, we talked about that on the wrist reaction. It's like, yeah, I want to go watch it before I judge yeah. it because you know you know adam marshall is like the offensive line is playing so good and then i go watch it and then i'm the i'm the bad guy all week so yeah um you know thanks adam for making me the bad guy but uh, uh definitely wasn't <laughs> wasn't an exciting performance so but i thought Derek Carr played really well under pressure so i'm gonna go over that today um and you know go over the touchdowns but of course josh jacobs was just carrying people half the time and carrying guys for nine yards and you know, make it something out of nothing a lot of the time. So, I mean, because the run game, it was interesting. They had some really good blocks in the run game, like, some, you know, where they blocked everything perfect. And they had some where, like, Morgan Fox, you know, was blowing up stuff. You know, I mean, you know, I don't, I don't know who Morgan Fox is, but he, he looked like a superstar um, playing the run. Right. He, just, he was just blowing up, <laughs> shooting gaps and, you know, throwing, out, you know, Alex bars to the side and making all types of plays in the run game. So, you know, it was up and down, a little up and down for the offensive line, in my opinion. But I, I thought, you know, at times they gave Carr enough time to hit downfield. And I think that was uh, good enough. So, you know, it was good okay. enough, but, you know, it wasn't like right. super impressive. And then, uh, but yeah, I, I thought the, the, the rest of the offensive players are rolling, though. That's, that's now um, the cool question I have for you were yeah. they uh, on the back end? Were they really selling out to stop Devontae back there? Um, Not really. 
Not really. Really. So it, it, they were they were getting they were getting eight in the box and and trying to stop the run. No, not even yeah. that. No, they just you know, Staley plays what he plays. I don't think Staley like really. Staley just played what he played. They played a lot of cover five slices. Why I asked you about that? Like when they you know they're taking they weren't they're were trying to play um, a lot of the option routes. They had guys you know shooting the option routes. Um, you know, uh, so I mean basically. They placed, you know, Josh McDaniels then played off of that. I mean, I, I don't know what the hell he did week one. I don't know what they what they were trying to prove week one. But th- th- this week looked more like how we did the preview. Remember we did the preview and how they're attacking rules and stuff like that? This week looked yeah. more like that. Right. You know? Um, and, you know, they're, they're finding matchups for Adams. Like, they get Adams on Callahan, you know, and things like that. Like, on the, the flea flicker, I'm going to go over that play. They got Adams on Callahan. Um, you know, there's moving guys around, getting some good matchups. Because, I mean, they really didn't try to stop Adams, like try to stop him like other teams do, where they like have a guy inside of him at all times or anything like that. They just kind of play their usual, uh, you know, cover five slice, you know, cover seven man match type of things, cover six, you know, all, the, all that quarter uh, family type of stuff. And they kind of basically just ran their stuff. And, you know, they didn't really, as I said, they didn't really, really try to stop the run. It's just, you know, Morgan Fox was blowing everything up. I guess that kind of gave Brandon Staley like a little bit of what he really wants from a defense. But when it doesn't work, I mean, here goes Josh Jacobs for 20 yards and a touchdown. Yeah. You know? right. um, so, uh, I mean, uh, Brandon Staley is kind of, he's like, I'm going to play what I'm going to play. And we're going to execute. It's going to be a little complex. There's good guys moving around. And, you know, that's what I'm saying. Like, there's a lot of switching. So, like, on the, on the interception, you know, they're doing a lot of switching. I mean, they I think they do it really well. I just don't think he has the guys that could play man-to-man, pure man-to-man coverage like that. I mean, you got Michael Davis out there. You got Asante Samuel, who's, you know, up and down. He's not perfect. I mean, you know what I'm saying? Then you get this year Adderley one-on-one man-to-man, and then you get Drew Tranquil playing cover five. I mean, you can get attacked. He's, he, he just doesn't have yeah. the <laughs> it's funny. It's funny that you say that. It's funny that you say that because Raiders played – Probably the most man that man coverage that they played all season. Yeah, and you would you going into this, you would probably say like, hey, you know, Chargers secondary, that's probably you know across the board they're they're better in coverage, you know, than the Raiders. But Raiders DBs, like all of them, made plays on the ball in this game. Uh, so e- even even Sam Webb had technically a PBU, you know. So, but I mean, he looked the shakiest out of all those guys, but. Rocky Scene, Nate Hobbs, and Nick Robertson, all those guys were making pass breakups. Uh, Trevon Merrick had a great game. He was targeted four times, mm-hmm. one catch for five yards. Yeah. No, no first downs. You know, um, he, Trevon Merrick is like slowly, it's taking a little longer than what, you know, than I think what Raider Nation wanted and everything like that. But we're seeing some good strides this year, especially with him getting closer into the box. Yeah. Um, but yeah, it's just funny that you say that, that, you know, um, they don't have the personnel over there to run a man-heavy scheme, and the Raiders ran a man-heavy scheme against them and ended up <laughs> making the plays. Yeah, man, it, it's just like, because, you know, I think Asante Samuels is a little out of position. I think because they, they have him outside so much, and he's so short. Um, it's, it's it's a little of, it's it's a little bit of, you know, like, why aren't you drafting a bunch of corners? I feel like he's, like, I don't know what he's doing over there. Like, you know, you're drafting JT Woods. And then you're drafting a bunch of offensive linemen. Yeah, I feel like that defense needs studs, and he's not going after studs right now. No, 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 no. He he thinks he can get it done with anyone. That's like a like a you're true wrong, defensive Brandon. guru. Like Brandon, a true defensive guru. Your ski's really cool, man. I like watching it, but you don't have the players for it, man. Because you, you know, I'm just I'm just gonna line up DeAndre Hopkins on Brian Callahan and let's see what Callahan does in cover five. <laughs> see i mean he's not it's not you're not getting 100 room for him he's gonna put hopkins or adams right there and you know you're not gonna switch guys you know derby james is like your best corner you can't put <laughs> but he's got to play back there he's got to slice people so yeah he's, he's got to jump it yeah he's got to jump it <laughs> you can't put him in mid coverage all the time so yeah he's uh yeah yeah but this is not a Chargers break preview breakdown but that's why the raiders were able to move the fall to the air car was four of seven on deep passes yeah, it was a uh, find, find the one on once. Find the one on Easton. once. Easton. Yeah. All right. Uh, so you know what, what we want to do first? We do offense, defense. You have any preferences? I don't care either way. I don't care. Excuse me. Excuse me. All right. Yeah, I can. Um, 
Well, uh, we have 82 people in here, uh, and the offense is the big ticket item. So I will <laughs> jump in and do the defense first. Yeah. And by the time we get a little bit more, you know, audience <laughs> in here, you, you can you can do Devontae Adams and uh, Derek Carr and all that, you know, what the people come for. Yeah, they, they come uh, to see the points, man. They, they don't come to see the points get stopped. All right, look, we're going to make some people <laughs> believers in defense right now. We're going to talk about pass rush exclusively. I know that we've been talking about, um, you know, run stops, you know, in these uh, previous ones, but we're going to talk about the cat and mouse game that happened in, in you know, in this particular matchup. Um, and, you know, right out the gate, defense came flying off the ball. They're sending, they're sending a blitz, you know, um, Denzel Perryman blitz in a gap. And they've done this all year. And Max Crosby just sets the tone, play one. Two hands swipes, you know, bats the ball out of Justin Herbert's hands. He lets him know, hey, this is going to be a long day for you. We're going to be on you like white on rice. Okay. And holler at Jerry Tillery. Watch watch this guy right here. We, we You talked about it, Marcus. You said Jerry Tillery re- revenge game. It definitely, definitely was. Okay. Probably had his best game ever as an NFL player. You know, we see him here. He's got the two way go on the guard. He goes ahead. You know, really works that inside edge, forces the quarterback out of the pocket. Chandler Jones cleans it up for a one-yard game, brings up a fourth down. Okay, we see another one here this time. Tillery just goes straight for it, beats that guy. They're setting the, they're set the protection towards Bilal Nichols. Okay, one-on-one for Jerry Tillery. He'll take it. He, he's been salivating, craving this moment. So if that's what you're going to give him, he's, you know, he yeah he was giving the, this guard a problem all game, you know. Here's another one. This is just a fantastic win. I mean, Jared Tillery has coming out had a lot of talent, mm-hmm. fantastic athletic profile. We see it here. Like this is this is something a DN might do. This is something like we see Khalil Mack do, mm-hmm. right? Swim like swim what is that even? You know, beautiful. Swim. Swim I mean, it's like he's like going, he's like going for the long arm pull across swim move. Yeah, beautiful. And then body slam. Okay. But after Jerry Tillery started getting going, it was Chandler Jones. Was I, I, and I, you know, we said Chandler Jones, he's gonna have a big game going up against this guy Slayer. Slayer has no idea. He like you. Ne- I've never seen a a sack like this where the tackle literally doesn't block at all he doesn't even touch the guy and the guy never goes he never even goes past his face i've never even seen that before interesting decision making there from slayer and a lot of this was just Chandler jones just feasting on a young guy he goes look look he's gonna go for the euro step bull rush inside detach Mm. you know and then here's another one from Chandler Jones, gonna go for the cross chop or you know, fake cross chop bull rush. Okay, again, when you, when you detach like this and you see Chandler Jones, at first he's here, but then he extends, he locks out. So once once we get locked out, now we can detach and get in on tackle on the quarterback. So three sacks from him, and. The majority of these, except for that first one I showed you, you know, um, you know, this this one also is another blitz, another example of a blitz. But the majority of these were a four man rush. Raiders were really able to get pressure with four men. They didn't really have to even blitz. So what did we're talking about the cat and mouse game? So what did the Chargers do? They started screening the Raiders. Okay, a little play action, ball fake, come back the other way, throw back to the tight end. Okay. Linebacker, really, really poor job. Really poor job. He's trying to dance around this. He needs to go hit this guy, get on that outside shoulder. Okay. Jayon Brown, he had, a, he had a solid game, so I'm not going to pile on him. Probably one of his best games. Here's another one from Jayon Brown, though. Just having a really hard time getting out there on the screens. Okay. But you can't screen this team forever. Watch Max Crosby here. You want to screen to, your, you know, one of your best players? Watch Max Crosby just unload. Okay, and he hits this guy right into the legs at number five. Number five gets rolled up on. Look at these guys. They're just writhing in pain on the ground. 
<laughs> okay, like dang, I, like Austin Eckler had to come out after this. He's like he he had he crawled off the field. He was like tapping out. After this, okay, yeah, you you want to screen these guys? Okay, great. And then here's another here's another great example. Okay, get a little screen, and we got Harmon running this alley right here. Watch Harmon's hands. His hands look. His hands are open. His hands are open. And as soon as the ball carrier gets close, he balls up that fist, throws a little right hook in there. Bam! Pops that ball out. Ron Harmon could have been a maybe a title fighter. Okay. Okay. So they they started screening. It started backfiring on him. Now, let's talk about the QB spy package. So they started doing some other things. They want to start throwing screens. Okay. Well, we'll start instead of rushing and, and blitzing everyone. Maybe we'll just send three and we're going to use Cleveland Furrow as a spy. And you see him here reading the quarterback's eyes. And not just spying the quarterback, but getting in this passing lane, okay, and, and and making it tough on this quarterback, just giving him something something a little extra to think about. Okay, here's another one. Doesn't didn't always work out, Clint Farrow. He's trying to find the quarterback's eyes. He's trying to get in there. Doesn't see it. Okay, they they get him on that one. Here's another one. Cleveland Farrow backs up again. Three man rush. Cleveland Farrow. Reads the quarterback's eyes. He's he's making it noisy. He's making the you know a little a little hairy in here. Okay, so they started doing that, and then we see Chandler Jones even getting on the action. Read out of this out of this stunt back up. Okay, but I think Cleveland Furrow would have definitely even got 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 that as well. Chandler Jones went in and said, "My three sacks are not enough. Let me steal this pass breakup from you." Two, Clee. But watch, watch Clee, consummate team player. He's juiced. Okay. All right, so, but they did. We talked about it earlier. They did blitz. They did blitz, and they had an extremely effective, shockingly effective blitz, and they ran this the majority of the game. Notice we are on single high, one safety at the top of the screen. This linebacker, Jayon Brown, he's lined up on the side of the back. This is the will. When they get into dime, this will be Isaiah Polamau, and and right now they're just in um, a true nickel. And then, so we also have another linebacker in the game. This is Denzel Perryman. Both these linebackers are going to blitz. Notice, they both blitz. So, and all four defensive linemen are also rushing. So this ends up being a six-man pressure. And they ran this a lot of the game. That's, you know, towards the heavy side. Usually, blitzes in the NFL, they're going to be five-man rushes. Simulated pressures are are more and more common now. So you're seeing that kind of, you know, be be a little bit more normal. A six-man rush. That's kind of, kind of saved for, you know, certain situations. And the Raiders ran this kind of look over and over and over again, probably as much as I've ever seen it run in an NFL game. Okay. And it was, and, and honestly, the secondary held up fantastic. We saw Rocky Sin on that one, break up a pass. Same kind of thing here. This time Amik Robertson in coverage. Okay. The ball, the 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 blitz. Notice both linebackers off the ball. They're coming. It's speeding up this quarterback's process. He doesn't want to stand in there. He's been hit all game, and they're blitzing him too. He's going to get rid of that ball. Okay, here's another one. Exact same look. Two linebackers off the ball. What are they going to do? They're they're both coming. Okay, and I think that's Trayvon Merrick in coverage on this one. Okay, does a good job. Here's another one. Both linebackers watch them. They both come. Six man rush. Quarterback gets rid of the ball quick. Okay. And this one's funny because watch at the beginning of this rep. Did I get it? Oh, I, I cut it out. At the beginning of this rep, um, Amik Robertson and Nate Hobbs, they motion to each other like, hey, we're going to switch. If these guys switch, we're going to pass these off. Banjo. But then. Keenan Allen goes out, so Nate Hobbs and Amik just stay on Keenan Allen because they're so worried about Keenan Allen. Number five is just running. I mean, this is an easy first down. Or a touchdown, probably. I mean, maybe, maybe even a touchdown. I mean, he, it, it, you're right. If he gets it, you know, a line drive and then shakes uh, Deron Harmon, that's a touchdown, right? I mean, but that's a big play in, in a crucial situation. You can't make a blow like this. But because everyone is coming, watch, all, all, all six of these guys in the core, they're coming. The quarterback's not sitting around waiting and reading and scanning and trying to figure out who's open. He's just making a predetermined read and he's going to throw it up. Mm -hmm. 
right? So yeah. the blitz is actually making the quarterback not see this. Okay. And the and the secondary had less of these. This is probably one of the only ones that I saw. Um, at least like that, uh, that drastic. And what I talked about earlier about not understanding how to defeat this blitz scheme. Okay. Here's a great example because they're getting beat four man rush, they're getting blitz that what they started doing, they started leaving backs and tight ends into block, but the scheme that the Raiders are using, basically the more guys you keep in, the more blitzers start coming. Okay. So watch Trevor Merrick here. Okay, beginning of the of the rep, he comes in in motion. Okay, he's gonna line up over the tight end. He's in man coverage on the tight end, but he sees, oh, the tight end is gonna block. Okay, goodbye. I'll blitz. And then he comes after the quarterback. So th- actually doing all this and chipping and keeping the backs in, okay, you think that you're getting more protection, but it's actually causing more blitzers to come. And they did not figure this out, okay, until later on in the game, watched the back releases. Okay, now now Jayon Brown, now Jayon Brown is in man coverage on the back. All those other ones that I showed you, where all, both linebackers were coming, the back was stepping up and getting into pass protection, and that was allowing Jayon Brown now to add on as the sixth blitzer. So they did not figure it out. They allowed them to keep on running their scheme and didn't get them to break out of it until later on in the game. So you notice, okay, we didn't get six rushers that time because the back came out. J.M. Brown had to go cover him. Okay. So then what Paul Gunther starts doing, he starts calling cover zero blitzes. And he brings Deron Harmon down here on the edge. Now when the back goes out, Deron Harmon has him, and we still get the free rusher at the quarterback. And so that's – how the cat and mouse game went every time they thought they had an answer, you know, on offense in terms of like the protection and where they were set in the back. Paul Gunther added another layer. He called something else. Huge, huge credit to this defense for being able to pick all that stuff up and execute um, with minimal errors in that, in that game. Um, I also might do like a little uh, separate thing on Isaiah Polamau. He was used. As a blitzer, we saw him in there. We saw him, you know, get a couple pressures, you know, and, and everything in that breakdown. Uh, but he was also uh, he uh, he also dropped back in coverage. And there was even one where the he he's because he's playing when you're the dime linebacker. Basically, you're a DB that's playing weak side linebacker, right? When you're the dime, so you're the D, you're a DB, but you come in you play weak side linebacker. He, uh, the running back goes out wide and it's empty. So the linebacker, weak side linebacker, has to go out and man. On on uh, on the back, but then they end up disguising it and playing zone, and he's playing corner out there. So it's obvious Isaiah pull him out. He's got the the game plan. It wasn't just like just line him up like I thought originally from watching the broadcast. It wasn't just line him up and just blitz him the entire game. He was yeah. doing a lot of stuff. So I see his role continuing to increase as as the year goes on. Uh, I'd be excited about um, you know just seeing what kind of niche he carves out for himself. That's good, man. That's good to see his development. And like the pass rush, man, has just been uh, so good lately. I think that's been kind of the driving point. Like even Jerry Tillery just being there. I think he's opened it up for Nichols, and he saw Nichols open it up for him uh, this past week. So that's really good to see. And of course, Max Crosby being Max Crosby, and then Chandler Jones seemed like he, you know, he finally is getting the finish. And if his sacks start coming in bunches, you know, he's got six weeks to get to ten. So and everybody can be like, oh, you know doesn't matter when they come, right? <laughs> they come early. They come now. It's better than nothing. And they, they're about to face an offensive line that is not good at all. So right. really well against the Seahawks. Was, that was when I thought their most impressive performance because the Seahawks offensive line was really good. And Max Crosby and, and Chandler Jones made, you know, Cross and Lucas finally look like rookies, but nobody else did. So you, you really see a good outlook. And I think they're about to feast on this Rams offensive line. So you trouble for it. Whoever quarterback it is, is they're going to have a long day at this point it's just with all the pressure they're getting it's gonna be a long day right so i'm excited about that i mean with i mean this game it's just this nfl defenses are built on defensive lines i mean the, the best defenses in the league you could you, every single one has a great defensive line it's, i mean it's 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 what it's yes. about right now it's right. not really about having the best secondary in the world which is i mean it's important but you know the niners i mean luxury like i mean who, who, javarius ward is the best niners corner who's the other no, they ain't got no dominant corners. Ain't, I mean, is uh, is Trevor's worth playing? Yeah, 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 he plays for the Niners. Yeah, 
Um, well, they got uh, Mosley. They got they got Mosley Mosley um, over there and uh, Jimmy Ward. I actually like their DBs for the most part, but I know they're, that they're, they're probably banged good, up. Though. They're good guys, though. You know what I'm saying? It's not like a. They're not like guys that you know come to they'll go to another team and just make a huge impact right away. But um, they're, but the defensive line is ridiculous. So you know they, they are able to play things faster. Yeah. They expect the ball to come out quicker. They can jump on, they can jump passes because of that. And and that's that's the thing that you can do. I mean, because you have what Herbert, you know, he's get rid of the ball quick because he has to, or and he starts feeling he's you know, he's feeling a little pressure right there. You know what I'm saying? It, it shook him being shook just looks cooler because it he doesn't look, you know. But that was that was some shook stuff that <laughs> that throw just throw it out like yeah, that was a clean pocket, man. He he there was a there was a couple. Where he was getting rid of the ball and clean pocket a little early for yeah. sure, um, and that's not an indictment on Justin Herbert because yeah, was who yes, which quarterback wouldn't do that if they keep on getting hit, they keep on getting set, you know. So yeah. that's the benefit of getting that pressure. You need it, and like you're saying, this is really uh, in you know NFL at this point. I would say it's an arms race. Uh, to build up defensive lines, you can't just have like four guys. You need like six or seven, mm-hmm. you know. Um, and look, look, Raiders just had a guy like Jerry Tillery, who's a freak athlete, six foot seven, two hundred and seventy five, two hundred eighty five pound interior rusher. You know, with go look up his mock draftable spider web, y'all. Okay, it's sick. All right, he's a fantastic athletic profile. So you want guys like that on the team, and you know, we saw some good things from Jerry Tillery. Hopefully Billings gets back and Jerry Tillery can just, you know, just be a situational rusher because they were asking mm-hmm. him to defend the run. He had one good snap against the run, but for the most part, didn't look too hot there. I would say uh, yeah. that's not his forte. Mm-hmm. Um, and he's not going to be as geeked, you know, to play the run against teams that didn't cut him just a week <laughs> ago. Right. So <laughs> get, get him out, get him out the lineup and let him just rush the passer. But you have, again, you have, a rotational piece, a guy who's a fantastic athlete. That's what you need. That's key in the NFL right now to play defense. You have to have, you know, like a deep roster of defensive linemen. And then after that, I agree. Like you could probably get away with having some journeymen in other positions, um, especially because in my opinion, I know we're going long winded on this. It's 27 minutes. I'm, 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 I'll let you get in at 30. Okay. Um, in, in my, but in my opinion, the majority of these guys that we think are like fantastic, like sick, amazing DBs, right? Yeah. Mm-hmm. If you put them on a team with no pass rush, they would look real average. So, <laughs> you, you, you I know, you, you, okay. So, a pass rush makes DBs look good, you know. Yes, um, so, so that's really what it comes down to. And that's why we're seeing these DBs start making plays because they, they have a feeling they know that ball's coming out. That quarterback's not sitting back there and letting these things develop 30, 40, 50 yards downfield. And, you yeah. know, I, that, I that's not happening. I hope Baker Mayfield plays, to be honest. I mean, everybody. <laughs> yeah, please. It doesn't matter, honestly. <laughs> uh, I, with that offensive line, I really hope Baker Mayfield plays because that's going to be right. fun. There, there's, you know, it's going to be turnover central. It'll be a pick six or something. Just, just jump it. Just jump the quick slant because he's going to get rid of it or he's going to try to make a stupid play because he thinks he's superhuman. So, uh, I hope he plays, man. <laughs> Tillery is huge. This is a big dude. Huge a, unit. A big dude. All right, man. Uh, I guess we can get to this offense. We're going to go over uh, Derek Carr under pressure here. And then, um, you know, we're going to go over the three touchdowns. The flea flicker, the smoke route uh, to um, Devontae Adams, and, you know, a little Josh Jacobs run play. So let's go ahead and get into yeah. that. Let's do it. A lot of pass rush in this one. A lot of pass rush. It's pass rush central this week. All right, so Derek Carr under pressure. You see, you see the numbers there. Eight for 12, 105, 105 yards, one touchdown. Pass rating 121.8, 8.75, 8. YPA. These are TDL pressure numbers. Do not look at PDF. It might be different. Um, but these are my numbers. So Yeah. Shout out, shout out uh, that one place that has passing rating and YPAs. I can d- download it. Shout out to those guys. All right. Here we go. First play. It's a little five yard throws to first pressure. All right. So you guys can check my work. You can tell me if I'm an idiot, but my pressure's here. So, first one, we get a stunt, which we know we, this team is not very good at playing stunts. So, 
first one we get here. Just, just, just simple, you know, TE stunt right there. Kalil Mack dips under a nice little Kalil Mack little move right there. You guys have seen that for a long time, but, you know, he got traded away. Let me go back real quick a little bit. You see this quick pressure car has to get rid of the football. Quick pressure. See, this is a pressure, you know what I'm saying? It's right in his face. Ball right in his face. Has to get rid of that ball. Quick. Little five-yard play right here, right? All right, so next one. Again, four-man rush again on this one. Kind of wraps around a little bit. You see in Clue Mac, they're trying to double Clue Mac. Clue Mac almost gets to your boy here. Derek has to get out of the pocket there. I know some people think that he could run right here and outrun number 69. I th- maybe he would have, but if he runs, you see Andre James is holding 69. I mean, it's a hold right there. I mean, it's a pure hold. Let's just say he just keeps going. He's going to keep holding probably. <laughs> and then this guy's going to throw the flag. I'm just going to assume. But, you know, this wasn't a bad throw. It's just when you throw it to a running back. I can't expect a running back to make this. Yeah, I, I, Mayor Abdul is a great kid has great hands, but that's a tough play right there. Tough adjustment, tough adjustment. Tough adjustment. All right, so here we go. Next one. Like set, we're getting four again. You see where it comes from. His Parham's getting beat right here. He's got hands inside. His hands are outside. This dude, Morgan Fox, I don't know who Morgan Fox is. But Morgan Fox is a superstar, obviously, because – he balled. I don't know who, <laughs> but you can see he has some good technique. He got his hands back inside of Parham, pushes him right there, right, right to the right back into the quarterback. Derek Carr has to get rid of it quick. You see how Derek Carr, how much pressure Derek Carr avoids sacks because I, I, you, you see a little bit here. His pressure to sack ratio is like fifteen percent right now because I mean you got Alex Barr is trying to get up. He's on the floor here. Parham's getting blown up a little bit. Everybody's it's 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 never really it's always a little bit dirty a little dirty but then you know we get the drop from Mac Collins here. Come on, Mac! Come on, Mac! Come on! All right, next one. Getting a little blitz on this one. Nope, nope. Well, it looks like a blitz, but it's thin. It's not. We're still getting rushed at four. What I like about this, you see how card is. I mean, this this is this is what I like about this one. They got the stunt coming around. Car just the quick step up, right? He knows this guy's coming up because he stay he stays right there. The guy's coming around the corner. Quick step up, uh, right there. Step up, avoid it right there. See, I mean, but it, it, it stunts once again. This line, they have so many problems with stunts. So let's just watch this one more time for the back. We got Kyle Van Noy. Right, it looks like they're bringing it, but you know they're coming out to play the running back out of it, right? And here comes Vanoy right around the corner. Luminar just doesn't pick; he just slow to get there, right? And, and let's just say, I mean, if this defense had any more bend, right? He probably gets around this corner a little bit. You see how Van Noy is a little bit, a little bit of older player. He's not getting around the corner a little bit that quick. <laughs> he's struggling. He's always on the floor. It's just your corner is faster than your thirty there. All right, this is the flea flicker right here. And here's Morgan Fox again. Here goes Morgan Fox. I don't know. I don't know who, who's Morgan Fox, man. I don't know who Morgan Fox. He that dude balled this game. He, I think he had the game of his life. You see, he, his hands are inside. He's he's got heart. Parham just totally off balance, basically. And then he's just rips right around him, shoves him to the side. Once he realizes it's a pass, it's a great throw from Derek though. Under pressure. Touchdown. But you see, like, I mean, Parham really struggled, though. Let me watch one more time. Right? He has his hands inside, but the guy's able to reset. And the guy just has full control. Even if it was a run, I mean, this guy's gonna, about to make this play. If it was to Josh Jacobs on a run, right? He's just waiting and just goes right around him. Full leverage. Mm. Touchdown. With the pressure in his face. All right, here we go. Next one. Play action. And Parham beat again. This time by Austin Johnson. But hurry there. Car gets rid of this ball quick. 
play action. And it's a nice little, you see the nice little snatch and trap? Look, look at Cole Miller. Cole Miller ball this game. Look at this look, snatch and trap. Right? And then, uh, but Parham did not ball this game, which I think he's in the wrong position. I think he's he hasn't played well at left guard, but he was so good at right guard, which he played in college. You got he gets caught leaning here again. Swim move, rip. Sorry, not swim move, rip move by Austin Johnson, but Carr is able to avoid the pressure here, avoid the sack. Of course, because it's also an awesome route by Devonta Adams. You can watch the Carfax to see that. All right. Next one. I mean, there's a lot of pressure Zamir White in the game. I think there's a, there's a factor into that, but hey, here we go. <laughs> Did, look, Morgan Fox again just tosses Parham to the ground here on this one. But Carr does a good job avoiding the pressure here again. It's Matt Collins. Morgan Fox, man. And it's, and it's a stunt again, guys. We're seeing a stunt. I tell you, these stunts cause this team problems. So here we go. Parham thinks he has Johnson, but Fox just runs into him. I think James does a good job of picking up Johnson here, but it doesn't matter because Parham's so off balance. He's getting thrown to the ground. Carr does a good job just getting rid of this football, avoiding that sack while he's getting hit. All right, third and three. This 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 one, you know, has Matt Collins open. I mean, Carr really had a choice on this one, so we'll, we'll watch this one. This one's really on Foster Moreau because you got Foster Moreau and Khalil Mack, which just isn't a great matchup. You know, if, if I was picking a matchup here, I don't want Foster Moreau blocking Khalil Mack. But, you know, that's the run action we're getting here. We're getting run action play, right? And, of course, Khalil Mack goes right around Foster Moreau like he should. <laughs> but – uh, you know, I know Matt Collins is wide open, but so is Adams, right? Adams is, I mean, he's just not as open as Hollins, but I mean, he has just as, just, just, just as good a separation as you would see, right? But a lot of this is because there's a tight end on Khalil Mack and it forces Carr not to step into this throw, right? Which I still think he's, I think he's a little late here in my opinion too. The Carr can't step in this throw and then he, he shorts it and allows Michael Davis to catch up. All right, so Let's he... See. If he has time here, and you know, maybe he's waiting for these guys to cross and making they don't make sure they're running to each other. So just like throwing this ball up like right here or something like that and waiting. But you could tell by his feet, he was not throwing a Hollins. Watch his feet. Watch his feet, guys. His feet right here. You can just watch where they're pointing at. He's not throwing a Hollins at all. He's never throwing to him. Never. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, but the pressure forces him to not step into this throw, trying to avoid it. And he can't step in the throw, ends up fading it. Great, great recovery by Michael Davis, though. It's a good play. Never give up, DVs. Never give up. Never. All right. Next one. Play action here. Of course, we get Foster Moreau. I just, it's just not, it's just not, it's just not, it's not the best thing to do, right? We're getting Foster Moreau. He's in a bad position. Foster Moreau versus Cleo Mack is. I just feel bad for the dude a little bit. But you see, he's getting pushed. He gets pushed right in the car right here. And he's throw this one away. All right, so we'll talk about this one a little bit. Because I know I'm right here. You get play action. Now, Colton Miller's losing two here. So you could say Carr can already, like, step up and maybe run here. But Kyle Van Noy, he's just going to detach, right? He's going to detach. And Carr is not that fast. And also, he takes off really slow. Like, Carr always, like, backs up before he takes off. He's, like, the weird – he has, like, the worst acceleration ever. So, it takes him a little while to get to top speed. <laughs> so, he wasn't going to get to that gate lane. <laughs> it's, it's weird. I just – it's hard to explain. He, like – he, like – he has, like, a false step before he runs. It's weird. Not going to not gonna escape that pocket. <laughs> he's not. All right. Uh, th this is my favorite one, though. This is one. This is good showing of how he's avoiding pressure right here. So you see he wants the quick out here. Watch his eyes. He wants to a little, hit the white hook quick out. It's not there. He's coming backside to Adams. He knows he's about to have Adams on this drag route, right? But Parham, he's losing to Sebastian Joseph Day, right? Then Carter's a good job of just moving the pocket. And then you see, uh, you know, uh, I think it's Morgan Fox again. Here comes Morgan, <laughs> the superstar. And uh, it's a great sidearm throw by Derek and a great snag by Devontae Adams right there. 
Beautiful. That was, that was probably his favorite, my favorite play of him avoiding pressure here. Nice right there. Morgan Fox, man, is, is man. Maybe that's why they got rid of Jerry Tillery. Here we go. <laughs> I guess so. I guess so. So here, here's this one to get a blitz right here. I, you know, I don't know what him and Miller are doing, this miscommunication here, because somebody's got to pick up this guy up the middle here. I don't know if you're counting for that. You'd rather have this guy, Van Noy, come around the corner, in my opinion. You don't want a guy coming up the middle. Car has to move. And Car does a good job in the hidden Hollands here for a first down back back behind his throat, you know. Uh, run that back, run that back real quick. There we go. Let's see how many people end up coming. One, two, three, four, five, six. So six-man pressure, almost seven because 52 is peeling. Mm -hmm. So this is on the quarterback. To pick up the extra guy and to escape, so yeah. this is probably how it's supposed to. I mean, this is probably how it's supposed to go. He ends up buying time instead of throwing it hot. There's no one hot, so he has to buy time. Yeah. yeah. Good point, BD. Good point there. All right. I think this is the last one here. Just saying, there's a lot more pressure than you know the the broadcast said. I'm just saying. <laughs> you, you guys be the judge of what pressure is right here. But it, there's a. Uh, Here's another one, another stunt. There's another problem. We got stunt problems here, right? This actually just might be a great spin move by Sebastian today. <laughs> There's Alex Bars again. This is my favorite thing Alex Bars does. Is when he misses a block, he just acts like he didn't. It's awesome. Right here, like this. This is a spin move. Uh, maybe he's supposed to push him, and maybe Lunar's supposed to pick him up. But then we have this this Morgan Fox is just beating Moreau, and then you know Alex Bars is not blocking anybody. And then we got this big mix up here between these two guys. And this Sebastian Joseph Day comes free. And also Miller is getting beat too by Austin Johnson, which, you know, that's very concerning. <laughs> but hey, it's just, it's just a lot of pressure. All right. So let's get some positivity here. I mean, that was positive, but, you know, uh, the flea flicker here. I really want to talk about this flea flicker play. Okay. So flea flicker, we're getting what they like to call goose, which is two seams here. We're getting double seams, okay? No, sorry, go and then a seam route, okay? On And then we're getting the under. We're getting a fake block here from Hollins, and then he's going to take an under. They scored a touchdown on this last week, but they added – they did this at 11 personnel. The previous week, they did it at 21, okay? So that's the switch up. But also, it's rare you see a flea flicker out of shotgun. I, I don't know how often you see a flea flicker out of shotgun, BD. But maybe that's like a college thing. I don't know, but I haven't seen that that very often. So, hmm. so fleet, you know, shotgun, right? It's like a little lead play. I don't know if Hollins falls on purpose. I've been trying to figure this out. <laughs> no, he got tripped up right there. But one thing I want you guys to notice is watch Asante Samuel, man. Asante Samuel just bites on this. He bites. Look at him. Keelan Cole's about to be wide open. So Nasir Adderley is stuck here. Okay, he can be like, okay, I can double team Devontae Adams like I'm supposed to. <laughs> or I can leave Keelan Cole wide open for a touchdown. So he decides he's going to take Keelan Cole, right? I still think Derek Carr could have do this ball to Keelan Cole if he wanted to, if he just wanted to step back and throw it. But he's also got Devontae Adams streaking by himself. I mean, this would probably have to – this would be at the more of a perfect throw since the angle Adderley's coming at. This is just an easier throw, in my opinion. And – he hits him. He's just right on the money. Because Callahan's expecting help. He is. He's he's in shock that there's no help over the top. He's expecting he's he's you know there, he's expected help right here, right. That's why you see Derwin James. He's driving on Hollins, right? Because he thinks Hollins is running an under, so he's driving on the under. He's expecting help over the top on Adams. He is. <laughs> it's not there though because Asante Samuel is here, and that's a touchdown. And that's why Callahan's, he's like, where's my help? He's like, looking back, like, what's happening? All right. That's awesome. I mean, that's really, I mean, it's, it's basically more on Asante Samuel. All right. So, in this next one, this is uh, what they call a variation of Goose. Okay, so Goose is the seams, right? We see the seam and then the go. But this one's called smoke. So, you're going to see a basically a stop, like a hitch. And then an out go like this, kind of like this. So you can watch watch Adams do that. I mean, probably seen this online a million times. The same throw. 
All right, and, and this is the clean pocket. You know, this is probably one of the best pockets I've seen all year. Look at this pocket. This is awesome. It's terrific. That's a pocket. Everybody was talking about what a clean pocket is. This is it right here. This is, this is clean. That's a clean pocket. <laughs> yes. <laughs> it's still kind of closed at the end. But <laughs> but let's, let's watch Adam's uh, route right here at the, here at the bottom. You see the smoke route. Sells it. Oof, gets some on there. I mean, Santi Sanders actually plays this pretty well, to be honest. Plays as, as good as you could play it. Right? And, and what, what I like about Adams here is that this ball is thrown a little inside, right? But he doesn't come inside until really late, right? That's what he's already has them stacked. He comes inside really late and catches that ball with one hand. Touchdown. So watch it one more time. You can see how, see how he – see where his ball is, right? Santi Samuel doesn't know where this ball is because he's always late with his hands, and then he comes inside so late and catches it. Like, it's a, it's a slight late movement, too, because you see how he's going outside towards – he Adams knows where that ball is going. Don't let, don't let him fool you. He knows where it's going. And then he goes inside right, right where Adams kids, you know, it's not the same. He has no chance at that football. Touchdown. It's incredible, incredible execution. Nah, it's, just, it's just nuts. He just, it's just, you know what I'm saying? He's just wide receiver tape, man. If you guys have a wide receiver or something, your son plays wide receiver, just show him Devontae Adams because Devontae Adams runs a 4-7 or something like that. <laughs> He's running past all these guys. <laughs> it's all about – Slowing speeds up and stuff like that. Yeah. All right. You know, you get a little Dilla Parham spike here. But, you know, this is uh, the slant lead, ISO. This is the same play they ran to get the touchdown at the end of the game. And you know, this is just a much beautiful execution. See the down blocks here uh, from 64 and 72. They get a good combo block there. And then he opens it up for Johnson right here on 49, who's going to just wreck him. And then Hollins, you know, this, this is why Hollins plays. You can see watch, why Hollins plays right here on this block. Look at Hollins right here on 24. Great block right there. Easy. Walk in. Touchdown. He's walking in. Walk in. No crack replace. No, no crack replace. He's, he, 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 he didn't want to tackle him, bro. He didn't want that. He didn't want that smoke. He didn't want the smoke, bro. That's, that's what that. No crack replaces. That's not crack replaces. I don't want the smoke. <laughs> You know what I said? Didn't want the smoke, man. It's bad football. Bad football. All right. So, you know, uh, I thought the, you know what I'm saying? So, I mean, the offensive line, like I said, had a little up and downs. It's mostly Dylan Parham. Let's keep it real. That was, that was like kind of a Dylan Parham low light, but we were trying to saw, show up Derek Carr handling pressure. Um, but hold I on. There was a comment. There was a comment earlier. It said, we're never going to get a game when Marcus is pleased with the O line. I want to play good. <laughs> After that, after that breakdown, <laughs> like, I, like I was pleased with it against the Seahawks. That's they not watch me last week. I was like, hey, they played awesome. I thought they played great last week against the Seahawks. I thought they played pretty good against the Broncos. So, you know, I give them praise when they play good. This is when they play bad, and yes. then, you know, I have to I have to be the bad guy because you know everybody's like, oh, they're awesome because you know whatever. But you know, I was just I was trying to show you know Derek Carr playing pretty good good under pressure most mostly. I mean, that's basically yeah. Answer. More to show yeah. factor that, but there's just a lot of pressures. It's not, I mean, he, he's dropped back 30 times. That was about 12 right there. I mean, PFF counted it a couple of more than I didn't even count. So, um, that's like half the, his dropbacks. He's like half his dropbacks. So, I mean, what do you want me to do? <laughs> you, you want me to just like, close my eyes? And just... <laughs> I, don't, I don't know what they want me to do with the offensive line. Like, I, I just, I don't gotta get it. Like, I, I could close my eyes though, I guess. I'm just ignore it. <laughs> but so, pressure is so, pressure. It's, it's just, yeah, I just want to yeah. say this. Rodney Hudson, Gabe Jackson, Kelechi Assembly, and Donald Penn, everybody here was, 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 we watched that. So I don't understand. Like, this is, you just have to have a higher expectation for offensive line play, I guess. Uh -huh. Um. Yes, I agree with you on that. Offensive line obviously didn't look good. Quarterback running around. Oh, come on. What else we need to see? And he's getting hit a lot. Um, so yeah, and then I'm glad that you know and you are being fair because you've been picking on bars all year, but now you're picking on Parham. You know, it's we're we're not creating narratives here, people. The tape tells us what the narrative is, and we're yeah. just showing you guys. Um, real quick, uh, what what's the guy's name? What, what what's Morgan Fox. Uh, Morgan Fox? Yeah, 
Colorado State Pueblo D two. Okay, he's like he's like one of the all time leaders D two history sacks. He had like seventeen sacks his senior year, led wow. the nation. Okay, so you said he had his best game ever, best game ever as a pro, because I'm sure he has some dominant performances in D two. Yeah, man, his tape was fantastic, man. That dude has to put up some great tape. He's he must be balling over there. That's what I said. You know, Jerry Tillery's gone. I mean, he played the run well. He rushed the passer well. Like I'm like, who the hell is Morgan Fox? So right. they might right. got a little find over there, man. Um, like he was undrafted then, right? Because D two, he'd have to be undrafted. Uh, definitely. The um, okay, so we got a couple questions here okay. before we get out of here. Got okay. ten more minutes left in the, in the show. Daniel Wells, he's got a question for uh, – so I'll shoot this one to you, obviously. He's probably asking you. Which of the O-line are salvageable for you and which need to be upgraded? So he's just asking going forward, which one of these spots, these five that we got right now, six that we got right now are in the future? Uh, to be honest, like, I really feel like the other four are fine. I mean, if they if – they, I mean, if they move Parham back to right guard and then, you know, place whatever left guard they want to find, you know, if they, you know, they obviously don't like Simpson or like that. So they want to, if they want to put another left guard in there, they want to pick up and free agency. I think the rest of the offensive line is fine. I mean, they probably could find a right tackle. They want to upgrade if they like a rookie or they like somebody in free agency. But I mean, I don't think those are like absolutely necessary moves because they got Mumford at right tackle. I think who is thick is fine. And, you know, if, if he wants to get better, then, you know, it'll definitely take those steps, right? And then, uh, it, 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 to me, it's just finding another guard, which, you know, I, I'm a big a fan of Brett Nealon from USC. Uh, he's, he's a big guy I'm watching. Okay. I don't play center, but I'm pretty sure he could play guard. I'm, I'm sure he'd be all right. And if you, know, if, you, if you don't like Andre James or they want to replace James, then Brett Nealon could play center. He'll be all right. And then, uh, um, but it's not, because that's what I'm saying. It's not really that they – Offensive line has bad players. I just think they don't have good communication. I think they don't pick up stunts at all, right? Um, they're picking up blitzes wetter. I think Alex Barr shouldn't be playing. And I think if they move Parham to right guard and I you know, insert any left guard that is, you know, that's, you know, serviceable, I think they probably play like how people think they're playing. Right. Because, you know, it's been, like, Alex Barr's not even run blocking well right now. Um, you know what I'm saying? So it's it's not even – you know, if they replace him, then I think they'll be fine. And just move Parham back to right guard like he should be where he played. Like, he played two games at right guard, and he was just terrific. So it was just weird. They were like, let's switch him. <laughs> that was a weird thing to be. So and Parham hasn't played good at left guard, man. Is that just what I feel bad for him? Like, I feel like it's a confidence thing. I hope he keeps his confidence up. I hope he keeps believing in himself because he's not playing well over there, and he, he was playing so well on the right side. And I think that's right. the issue. So that's a problem I have. So you want to, if, you know, I, I don't think that they're that far from having a good offensive line because I think Cole Miller's playing really well the last three weeks too, man. He's been playing terrific, you know. And so is, I mean, Luminar's been playing well too, man. You know, I thought that I think he's playing pretty serviceable for right tackle. You know, it's just the interior is not playing well at all. They're not. It's what it is. Right. Yeah. It's uh, it's it's pretty obvious to see, um, you know. So, but. Hopefully we can see uh, Parham do something either if it's at left guard, gain that confidence back, or maybe they switch him around. But yeah, so we'll see. I agree. Willing to roll the dice with uh, all these other guys, including Munford. <clears throat> all right. So one more question here. That's only the question I see in the chat for right now. Um, dude, he's saying, why isn't Coase getting any defensive snaps? Okay. So this one's pretty easy for me. Um, the type of defense that uh, Patrick Graham, um, you know, employs, it's a big, big on controlling the man in front of you. Downhill, very physical style of run defense. They're defending the run. You know, one of the better run defenses in the NFL, especially like over the, like, the last like half of the season, um, last like five, six weeks, probably if you could stack up their EPA, you know, rush EPA allowed against probably anyone in the NFL. Yeah. Um, they're big on, and that's not an accident. You don't, you don't, that, that just doesn't happen just because like randomly, right? Like yeah. it's an emphasis. They want to stop the run. Right. Um, and then when you look at Koontz compared to these other guys, I mean, we even saw uh, Deshaun Bauer get in there. These other guys, jo Jones definitely been doing a great job stopping the run. 
And then also look at Cleveland Farrell. That's really what he does well, mostly is stuff and run, right? So those guys are getting in ahead of Coons because of their ability to not get pushed around when, you know, it turns into a run play out there. And I guess, you know, for the time being, at least, they're just not satisfied with Coons' ability to set the edge to even give them, you know, much of a chance in comparison to the other guys. But I'm sure if, those, if you know, Clay goes down with injury, Deshaun Bowers, he's banged up, Chandler Jones, he's banged up, you know, uh, I'm sure we would see Coons get a little bit more action in the lineup. But for right now, you know, he's, he's more of a, a very situational player. Um, and the way that the, this defensive line coach likes to run the subs, he doesn't like to just sub guys in for a situation. You know, like Jay Tillery won't just come in on a third down. Like he'll be in the entire series. You know, like Andrew Billings won't just come in, you know, on a third and one or something like that. He'll have he'd have been in the entire series. Um, you know, if, if they do sub, it'll be like on a third and very long or something like that. So, um, you know, you, you know, just from that perspective, Malcolm Coons probably just don't feel comfortable with him playing in every situation. Okay. Okay. A- any other questions or, you know, anything else? or any um, couple questions about uh, Tillery. I think uh, Marcus's breakdown show, showing this Morgan Fox guy let us know why they let Tillery walk. Um, <laughs> yes. Yeah. The best and Joseph Day, too. They, they look like they're doing just fine with their interior rush. So maybe yeah. just too many, too many mouths to feed in there. Um, and do you think they will resign Tillery? Uh, yeah, we'll see how he finishes the season here. You know, um, he looked, he looked solid so far, so far. Yeah. I saw, I saw they cut kind of Vickers. Yeah. I saw that. Yeah. If, if the Raiders keep winning, man, that means they have a chance to get Carl Brooks from uh Bowling Green. So I got my eye, eye on him, six four, three hundred pounds. So, okay. So. We got, we got some, now we're, now we're looking at late round. First round defensive tackles. Whoa, whoa, things are changing here. <laughs> I don't know. Mid, mid round, mid round. I don't know if he's mid round, bro. I saw a three hundred guy coming off the edge like him with all that pressures and the sacks. Oh, that that guy, yeah. Oh, that guy's going top fifteen for sure. He's sick. <laughs> you think you think he goes that high? I don't know. What, like, what's he, his name? What's his name? Like that's Carl a, Brooks. Carl Brooks. That, yeah, that's a very unique profile right there. Carl Brooks, look him up. Look him up, Raider uh, Raider Nation. I, 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 I can work with that. Uh, and, and yeah, I'll figure it out. Quite a few different positions. Very flexible. Yes, sir. Um, all right. So yeah, that's it for me, though, bro. I want to take this away. I'm good. Here. All right, guys. Uh, appreciate you guys listening, checking us out. Uh, you know, hit the subscribe button. Subscribe, subscribe, subscribe. Check out everything else we got on the channel. Also, you know, join the membership, man. You know, hit the hit the membership channel. Go ahead. You know, get get some of our deeper breakdowns of defense and offense and the car faxes and all that other stuff, get every throw and all that good stuff. You know, uh, you know, we've been doing a lot of Josh Jacobs breaks down. You're a fan of Josh Jacobs. Got a lot of Josh Jacobs on there, you know, as well, getting every carry of Josh Jacobs. So check us out there as well. We out. Peace. Hey, y'all.